All right, so I'm back where I belong. Apparently now I'm used to holding this camera in front of my face after a two, the two week vlog. But anyway, I'm back here messing with the S2000. I wanted to show you what I'm up to. So first thing, and you guys were right, this, you know, the guys that mentioned, this is the spacer, which I just ordered some, some 15 millimeter spacers. I'd ordered another set, but they're not the kind with the studs built in. And so you have to like remove the hub and press them out and new bearings and all kinds of crap. It's a lot of money to do it. So I'm going to stick with these and those type of spacers. So I ordered another set of 15. But anyway, these, the nuts that hold the spacer on were backing out on the other side. And so you were right, you really need to torque those properly. Uh, and so this weird, this crazy clunking in the back, I thought the darn suspension was broken. So while I'm jacking this up, the other thing I did is removed all of the anti-seize to make sure they're dry threads because you guys are right you're not supposed to do that i don't know what the heck i was thinking and then the suspension i'm setting the, the preload adjustment or the height adjustment and so the distance from here to the top which i can get with my ruler needs to be uh just over seven and a half uh just a shade over seven and a half inches which is 191 millimeters uh, and so my caliper isn't big enough plus you can't reach up in there anyway architects ruler and so I can get it up in there and then you know and then then correct the measurement and so I'm adjusting the perch height lowering that and then what I'll do is I'll go and adjust the height height measurement the other side I set this distance to 22 millimeters from here to here so uh, that that gives me you know about uh, whatever an inch and an inch and a quarter in lowered height uh, so again I want to get the height set up so that I ordered my wheels and everything today uh, and and sway bar and I also ordered the spoon rigid collar mounts for the front the front uh, I think it's the front and the rear subframes I'm not sure uh, but anyway I've got that and I've got them so I'm working on this inch by inch to, to get this set up all right so here's what we got so let's see where we're at I've already adjusted it a little bit but as you know I adjusted the wrong setting I need another like turn or so I'm setting it at seven and five eighths because there's a little bit of you know play here in this see the distance here and so i've you know i've measured that with the caliper and then the secondary measurement is i want this to be 22 millimeters close enough from the bottom of the perch to the top of this so i'm going to be pretty dead on i've actually had better success Turning it with this and I have with the other. I'll show you in the manual where I got this information from. Another couple of turns. So once again, just to recap, if you haven't watched the other S2000 videos, I screwed this up. I've never had a suspension where, so you notice this collar here, where you adjust height independently of preload. Uh, every, you know, KW, Bilstein, most other suspensions, they don't, the suspension JRZ, um, suspensions that I've had in the past haven't had an independent height and preload adjustment was all just one setting. I think that's where I want it. Make sure we're getting a good connection here. And come up one. So now I'm back to the recommended factory preload setting. So now I can go and adjust my height. spot on exactly where I want it to be I'm pretty sure so 191 millimeters from the bottom of the top hat to the stop at the top of the spring the the preload or the spring perch and then 22 millimeters oh shoot should be 22 millimeters between these two. I actually set it to 22 millimeters between these. 
So I'm, at, I'm going a little bit higher than recommended. So as long as I do it the same on both sides, it should be good. Space it back on. Clean these up. Already sprayed some gum out on them, some carb cleaner. Get this junk off of them. I think it'll be okay if I have just a tiny bit of anti seize in there. It'll make sure they never lock up. But you guys are right. These should be done with dry thread. All right, so I decided to go square with a uh, with a bigger front sway bar. So ordered my wheels today, both CE 28 ends and 17 by 9. I have all the, should theoretically have all the proper stuff. I ended up having to do diamond black simply because bronze is not coming anytime soon. So maybe someday I'll swap them out for bronze, but for now they're going to be diamond black. They don't have titanium silver either. It's either mercury silver or diamond black, and they're due in. I actually, they actually had a set. And I, Hemmed and hot over too long. Somebody bought them on Tuesday last week. I should have bought them when I called. And so now it'll be end of August. Mid, between end of August and mid September is when we expect them. An evasive. Heights. See what we're working with. It's pretty good to me. I'm gonna go right around the rain on the around the block. See how this works. All right. So a couple of things I've learned in this whole suspension escapade that I've been on. First thing is that don't put Loctite or not Loctite anti-seize on threads. One, it makes a giant mess. Two, it's just not smart to do. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two, I've learned all about, you know, in the first video I was, I was asking myself, you know, man, I wish I knew how many turns I needed to do so I after figuring out preloads, height adjustments, and all of that stuff, I now have a better understanding of, one, how to use the manual on the suspension. So I know what to do there. But I know now what, you know, what height, how many turns I need to make in order to, in order to get you know, a height adjustment or height change. And so on this suspension, one full revolution, one way or the other, is 1.5 millimeters in height difference. And so in this case, I, I want to move this up. I want to move it up a little less than a quarter of an inch, right? So, so let's just say I want to move it up a quarter of an inch. And so if you do the math, you know, there's 2.54 centimeters per inch. And so if I'm a quarter of that, you know, I need to move it to you know, approximately six and a quarter uh, turns, you know, if, you, if, I, if I crunch the numbers or do the math. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a paint mark. So this is just some black chip repair, which I bought for, I don't know, I think maybe wheels or something a long time ago. So I'm just going to put a little black line on here. So now I'll know exactly when I'm making a full revolution. And so let's just double check our preload dimension. So our height 
Now that I've got this set up to roughly 191 millimeters from the bottom of the top hat to the top of the spring perch here. And so, so now I know, you know, what I, you know, what I need to do distance wise. So that's set up. And so now, because I want to go, I want to go a quarter of an inch higher, I'm going to take, let's get you in here and show you. So I want to take this, so I'm going to, I'm going to loosen this, this bottom nut, right? So my preload is set. So the preload height adjustment is 191 millimeters from up here from the top to, to this part here. So that's set by, uh, by adjusting, oops, I keep touching the paint that I just put on there. So that's set by, you know, adjusting the height of the spring perch. So now I'm going to adjust the height of the, you know, the shock body, which won't adjust the preload difference. And so I'm going to come up, I'm going to do six, six turns of this, and that'll bring me up roughly a quarter of an inch. And so notice I know that made the black line here. If you can see that, I think you can. So I put the black line on there, and I'm sure it'll wear away, but hopefully some of it will stay on there for long enough so that I know how, how many turns are necessary, right? And so those, those are some of the lessons learned. The other thing I didn't do was, you know, I didn't think it really mattered. I didn't think this thing was going anywhere, but I really torqued those down much better. I am going to get a torque wrench. I am also... Uh, so I'm going to get that. That's the next purchase I'm going to make. I'll probably order a snap-on, probably a half-inch and a three-eighths inch version of you know, a high-quality uh, precision torque wrench. So I'm going to move the height adjustment here. Since I have here all the settings, I have this all proper, uh, and I just move it up a little bit more. Uh, this is kind of pointless because in a few days I'm going to be pulling this off and putting 15 millimeter spacers on the. The, the 25s are just too aggressive for me. It's, it's rubbing a little bit on here. Uh, I don't want to have to deal with that. Uh, it'll probably be two months or longer before my wheels get here, so I want this to ride properly. Uh, the other major thing, I've got this scheduled for next Friday. I'm going down to Dynasty Auto, the place that I did my M3 alignment, and we're going to do a, we're going to put the sway bar on, we're going to put the rigid collars on, uh, and then we're going to adjust the alignment. And I'm probably going to do, I'd like to dial in about 2.7 in the rear and probably 2.5 in the front. Right now I have darn near positive camber, and so that's affecting the steering quite a bit. Uh, so I'm going to prepare that for the wheels. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do, uh, so actually we'll, we'll also put the Origin Fab, uh, the A-arm or the control arm spacers or offset spacers on that as well. So we'll probably put those three parts on in preparation that maybe if I'm lucky I'll be able to just put the wheels on and be done You know, when, when the Volks come in. Uh, and, and, and so that, you know, that, that'll you know, maybe save me another trip down there. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I'm going to set up the car in preparation for the wheels, and, but hopefully the car still, because right now it handles terribly. Uh, and so that'll be preparation for the wheels and the brakes. And then what I may do is I'll probably go down to John at LHT to do the brakes uh, when I get them. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll, 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 see. we'll see, we'll see how it goes. When I get the wheels, I'll test fit them and see how that, that alignment setup goes. I don't want to wait. The car handles like crap right now. Uh, and so, so part of it was me jacking with the preload. The other part is the alignment was set up for the car much lower without spacers. And so, so it, it just isn't doing so well. So I'm going to mess with this and I'll come back and share the process. The other change is I think I'm going to start using gloves. My hands are so sweaty right now, though. You guys have been on me for a while, but about gloves so I guess I'm just gonna suck it up and do it all right so I got this side of the car dialed so I raised up the front probably I don't know a quarter of an inch maybe maybe a little less maybe like uh, 3 sixteenths so there's the, the front dialed so the first thing I need to get done obviously is get the alignment done you can see from this angle you can see we're darn near zero camber, if not slightly positive. Uh, so we'll get that, I'll get that dialed in here next week. But I, I wanted to get the height set uh, so that I had a, an idea of the height. And then what we'll do when I get the new wheels in a couple of months, I'll have, so I'll have the car line, the sway bar done, 
and then the car will be ready to go for you know the other parts. And so then the rear, the rear I'm going to move to a 15 millimeter spacer. So that should be here any day. So right now it's on a 25 millimeter spacer. And, and I raise this up probably a, a solid quarter of an inch. So now it's at a height that I prefer, you know, so there's a little less, there's like half a finger gap, which should also help with the rubbing, I would think. So the preload's completely dialed in and then the height is where I want it. So I'm gonna show you on camera, you know, the other side doing that now that I have it all figured out it'll take a lot less time than this side did so here's the height difference so that's about a, a quarter of an inch lower again you know height is a personal preference I don't like tucked and I don't like I mean I, again I like to see a little bit of a gap it's just my preference you know lots of people like it really really low I don't so actually the front here yeah, I mean, it's gonna come up maybe, like I said, maybe an eighth inch or so. And so I'm gonna go and calculate. So that again, this side hasn't been done, so I'm gonna do this now. I've got the preload set in the rear. I haven't addressed the front yet, so we're gonna address the front, but I'm gonna raise the rear up a bit. And so you can see the gap. And I want, you know, so I don't even have a finger gap. And so I want, I want a solid finger gap. I just. I like a little bit more height than that. I mean, that looks pretty decent, but again, I would like it a little bit higher. So I'm gonna raise it up maybe a, an eighth, nah, probably a, a full quarter inch. So I'll move it up a quarter inch and then put the 15 millimeter spacers on. So this exercise of measuring, remeasuring, height adjusting has been really a real positive learning experience for me. I really have a better understanding of how to set up a suspension now, or how to adjust it. So doing that simple screwing up the preload has made me, forced me to become more efficient in figuring out proper heights. And then to, you know, what a rotation means from a, from a height perspective. So let's just double check our measurement here. Bingo. So our preload is correct. So now, again, I already, I already adjusted this side earlier. And so now our, our height measurement is gonna be 20. Yeah, see, I'm quite a bit lower on this side. So I need to come up. So I don't need to worry about turns on this side because I set the height on the other side. And so, you know, the basic calculation is that when you turn this one rotation, so while we're at it, let's mark this thing. So one rotation is 1.5 millimeters in height adjustment. So I'm gonna make a line hate spanner wrenches, man. I'm actually using the one that's smaller, that's not really designed for this piece, but it's more efficient. So let's lock this down. We should be identical to the other side. Now well, again, I'm not, I'm not super concerned about the height of this. You know, and making sure that the height of the car is perfect because we're going to end up having to corner balance the car anyway uh, once I get the wheels and everything set up. Uh, so, I, again, I'm not super concerned about that right at this moment about the, the height from the fender to the ground. Plus, body panels could be, you know, different sized or you know, fit a little bit off. All right, so let's get this wheel on, get the car lowered down. We'll just check the height, make sure everything looks good. And as you saw earlier in the video, I removed all of the anti-seize that I'd gotten all over the place. The other reason why I wanted to do this sort of this adjusting now, if I can, is, you know, when I get the new wheels, if I have to do less adjusting, you know, I'm going to have some titanium lugs and I just don't want to be having to do nearly as much work after I get these expensive wheels on the car. 
Actually, they're not all that expensive. They're $28.50 for the set. Again, I'm doing Volk CE28M, but it'll be months before they show up. There we go. Now we got a nice half a, half a finger gap, which is what I want. So we'll come back and do the fronts. All right, so here's what I messed up before. And so the, the, the height of the perch, so I adjusted this, right? So I spun this in order to adjust the height where I should unlock this and move the, the body down into the, you know, the, into the shock. So into the frame of the, the base of the shock, right? And so my height from here, from the top hat to the spring perch, uh, should be in this case should be uh, seven and just over three quarters So the rear was supposed to be seven and a half. This would be seven and three quarters And so we'll measure from the very top of the hat to here Actually not the very top of the hat, but the bottom of the hat Yeah, so I'm I'm right at eight inches and I need to be just the shade over seven and three quarters so I need to come up with this part. And so I need to loosen this nut off the bottom so that I can spin this freely and I'm gonna to have to move it upward. And then the other measurement that I need is the measurement from the bottom here to there. So that needs to be 92 and a quarter. That's not a good spot. Mess with the... Uh, once you get the preload done, then we can mess with the, the spring or the height. Then you go up about a quarter of an inch. <laughs> I think that's it. Make sure I got this in the right spot. Come back like a turn. A couple turns. Actually, our height is probably going to be pretty close. Let's check this one more time. Bingo. Alright, so we got a 92 and a quarter. Come up under here. Alright, so now I need to come up a little bit. So let's loosen this. I sprayed a little PB blast on the threads just so that. I should probably blow it out, but I took the air compressor over to the garage. So now our suspension is set up and our heights from left to right should be should be pretty accurate. All right, so height, preload, all that stuff is dialed. I'll drive it around for a week or so and then I'll continue to monitor the heights. Uh, and uh, again, I'm gonna go get an alignment done where we'll probably mess with the height a little bit as well. On Friday, I'm gonna put the sway bar on the spoon rigid collar uh, mounts are called collar spacers or washers, whatever you want to call them. The origin fab uh, front uh, offset spacers or the spacers that, that offset the, the control arm. Oh, and the Eibach front sway bars will do that as well. So anyway, I got it set up at the height I think I want, but I don't know, you know me. I'll probably come back and, and tweak it a few more times. 
But anyway, thanks for watching this project, and uh, I'll catch you guys soon. Stay tuned for more crazy. Because what happens when the when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor.